Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great because we're gonna have a great day together. We're starting today in Augusta, Georgia, and today is all about the life of James Brown. We're taking the James Brown family history tour that starts over at the Museum of Augusta, and uh, they also have most of James Brown's artifacts there, or more than anywhere else, apparently, so this should be a great day. Days with Jordan the Lion, here in Augusta. It begins right now. So here's our meeting spot today, the Augusta Museum of History, and our tour comes with a free ticket to the museum. And I love that here at the museum, they actually have a piece of the railroad going through it. A Little bit of history. I just found out I'm the only one on the tour. Awesome. Here's our ride. You know how I can tell? Get on up. This is the funeral home that handled all of Mr. Brown's funeral arrangements. His embalming, all of the outfits. Mr. Brown had three funeral services. Um, one in Harlem, New York at the Apollo. He had one here privately and one here in Augusta publicly for the public and all of the celebrities to come to. Now, what makes this building so special was before it was the C.A. Reed Memorial Funeral Home, it was Mr. Brown's nightclub, the third world. So Mr. Brown was actually, in, in, in a sense, he was involved in a building in which he once owned. Now, a little bit about the third world. The third world, since it was owned by Mr. Brown, it was the premier club to go to in the 70s, and it happened to be in Augusta. Because Mr. Brown had such connections, he didn't just have a DJ. He had live music, so whoever was coming to Augusta to perform, they come to the third world and do a set. Staple singers, Johnny Taylor, whoever was the, soul, the hot soul person of the day, there was also at the third world Mr. Brown's um, father-in-law would actually cook these world famous hot wings and hot wing sauce that was special sauce and everyone came to, to get the uh the ladies room had like blue velvet um furniture because mr brown did not just want the ladies to just have like a bathroom he wanted like a dressing room and a whole you know experience for the ladies to really really make them pampered so once mr brown you know how business partners are mr brown finds another spot for the third world and he's able to turn this building over to the Reed family. Now, the Reed family, now Mr. Brown's family could have gotten anyone to do the funeral arrangements, but because the Reed family and the Brown family were so close, um, the Brown family had Mr. Reed do all of the funeral um, arrangements. Now, Mr. Brown's casket was 24 karat gold. It could not be um, flown on a plane. The Reed family drove the, um, the, the limo from Augusta to Harlem for the Harlem funeral and back down. They did all three of the um, dress of the costume changes for the funeral. And there's also a, um, a plaque inside dedicated to the memory of James Brown. Sadly, 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 we just lost Mr. Reed about a month ago. Oh no. Yep. He's, a, he's a local legend, would help people out in distress if you didn't have the funds you needed for um, for funerals, you can still have the same experience because he's got like the biggest and best cars and everything. But yeah, this is this, this is um this is Mr. Brown. This is where he was uh, embalmed and he was seen about with personal care from the Reed family. It is also we also believe it's where Mr. Michael Jackson actually visited Mr. Brown privately. He visited his body right before the public funeral home public funeral at the James Brown Arena where Michael Jackson did make an appearance. A broader part of where uh, Mr. Brown's neighborhood is going to go actually to his actual neighborhood. You said it was called The Bottom? The Bottom, yeah. Augusta, from high to low, how it plays in directly with Mr. Brown's story. The Imperial Theater is one of the historic venues in Augusta. It, it was um, renovated and it was open for uh, smaller shows, concerts, movie um, openings and things like that over the it is also where Mr. Brown, when he would come back to Augusta, is where he would rehearse his band. So if you're downtown in Augusta shopping, you might see Mr. Brown and the band unloading going to practice inside the Imperial Theater. Most people would get into the studio or something, no? You're going to rehearse inside the Imperial. It is also where Mr. Brown had um, the funeral of his third wife, Adrian, in 1996. And it is the home of the James Brown family toy giveaway. The Brown family registered needy families for toys at Christmas time 
And then uh, about a week before Christmas, the Brown family hands out toys um, at the Imperial. It got to be so big, they had to move it to the James Brown Arena, but it originated here, and you would have families, registered families, all the way down the street, lined up to receive toys. Now, you would have Mr. Brown and the Brown family, not a representative, you would have him and the family on Broad Street passing out toys, but Mr. Brown didn't have toys as a kid. So his thing was to come back to his city and give out toys to the kids right in his city. So that's how that started, and it, it is still going to this day. They did a, a drive-through toy giveaway last year, but they've always they kept the the drive the, um, the toy giveaway alive at Mr. Brown's request. That's great. Brown Plaza. 2006 was a big year for Mr. Brown. We lost Mr. Brown Christmas Day 2006. However, before that. Mr. Brown was able to see this statue erected in May of 2006. Mr. Brown's birthday is May 3rd. So the, um, the city always has some type of James Brown uh, celebration, party, something, uh, the first weekend in May. So that particular year, May 2006, at the James Brown birthday bash downtown, they erected this figure. It is true to size. Mr. Brown worked with the local artist to kind of make sure his he was uh, impressed with his likelihood with his like likeness of this um of the statue from where he's standing the his hair cape all of that he's on fleek for sure uh-huh and it depends on like this time whatever time of year you know people come at christmas time you'll see garland put around him uh saint patrick's day he'll have on something green folks come by uh people will be playing music and be dancing it's just it's just really a really really fun spot to be in downtown Augusta to see Mr. Brown. I hope you wouldn't be mad be me up here taking a picture oh, with no, him. Oh no, that's all we do. The tour that I'm taking takes place on Saturdays, but if you happen to be here for some odd reason during the week and you can't take it, you can use their QR code and they have a walking tour that you can also listen to an official of the city tell a bit of the history. Brown's manager at one time. Oh, you said Flash Gordon used to own that music store. James Manager. Before it was the Richmond County Board of Education, it was H.L. Green. H.L. Green is kind of like a Walmart from back in the day, the 40s and 50s. Mr. Brown would take with a uh, lady's groceries to the car for tips. Because Mr. Brown had been, uh, he had to be uh, released from school for lack of adequate clothing in the sixth grade. So years and years later, after Mr. Brown has made his money, he buys that H.L. Green building and turns it into his radio station at the bottom with office buildings on top. Later on, years and years later, the building of course is sold and it is now what? The Richmond County Board of Education. The same entity, not the location, but the same entity that put Mr. Brown out because of um, a lack of adequate clothing. It is also prior to the pandemic, every um, high school graduation was taken at the James Brown Arena, and all of those programs for the graduation were printed in the basement of the Richmond County Board of Education, and every single program for Mr. Brown's name, Richmond County Board of Education, graduation at James Brown Arena. So you see how education and everything kind of kind of comes full circle, and that's why Mr. Brown was so... Um, passionate about making sure that the family, that the kids and the grandkids got education. It wasn't so much entertainment, he wanted to be educated because he didn't have that. Hold the Masters and you have like the symbolic golf cart. But on the golf cart there are um, pictures of famous Augustans. Of course you have Mr. Brown, then you have Bobby Jones. Now, if you've ever seen um, Gone with the Wind to the right, uh, we have Butterfly McQueen, who's from Augusta. She played Prissy in Gone with the Wind. She played the young teenage slave. Now, to the left we have, all on the left side of the of the golf cart, is Jesse Norman. She was an um, opera singer, a very famous opera singer from Augusta. We lost her about a, year, a little over a year ago. So you kind of have this cool symbolic piece of, of uh, Augusta with all of our famous Augustans on it. There is a scene where Jamie Foxx, who plays Ray Charles, um, is fussing outside of an, uh, a venue with the promoter because he refuses to play uh, um, Jim Crow South. Well, 
that scene actually happened in real life and it happened here at the Bell Auditorium. And the man is saying, Ray, you'll never work in this town again. You're a crew. How can you do me like this? And Ray was like, you know what? I'm not playing to a Jim Crow to a segregated audience. So after Ray Charles took his stand, Mr. Brown came back in 1959 and played in his hometown to an integrated audience. It's also an, um, it's actually an, um, an album. James Brown Live at the Bell Auditorium 1969. And uh, it's a really good album. But yeah, that, that scene, if you watch Ray, that scene where the man is busting Ray out, that, that actually happened in real life at this particular venue. Mr. Brown was able to see the Civic Center uh, renamed the James Brown Arena. And you see they've got some, they put some awning on the awning, they put some uh, artwork up. And this building is about 42 years old. So for the longest, it was like state of the art. It's still like, when because we go, you know, this is where we have our concerts and uh, shows, comedy shows, wrestling, uh, dirt bike shows, uh, everything happens here. And there's really not a bad seat in the house. It kind of sits down, you kind of walk in and you can kind of go down, it's kind of octagonal. So it's a really, really state-of-the-art building for the times, but uh, we've heard um, that they're planning to do another build, I'm not sure, at the same spot or another spot, but for the longest, it's like a, a premier spot to have something. We, um, it always carries a full schedule. We, they just took down our 2020 Broadway show that was going to come prior to the pandemic. I really wanted to come. Um, we always have mainstays. We're a small city, but um, we've had all kinds of uh, people come here. Uh, Elton John's come here. I've seen um, Earth, Wind and Fire, Jamie, not Jamie Foxx, um, Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, anybody who, who comes, they, they come to the James Brown Arena and they always shout out James Brown. They always want to say something about James Brown or do like a set about James Brown. If it's a, if it's a concert, they're going to sing a James Brown medley at the beginning or they're always going to pay homage to the Godfather of Soul. We've got some, um, we've got this plaque right here. Was to me one of the best pictures ever of him, just him in his suit and tie and his hair is like perfect. Oh yeah. You see that? Oh yeah, that is, that is, that's perfect. Yeah, you, that to me, that's like, that's one of the best pictures. Cause a lot of, that's what we saw, you know, in my age growing up, when we would see him, you know, on TV or in the area, he looked like that. He had on his suit and his tie, he, you know, his costume, that was a separate thing, but that's the James Brown. We just saw, we saw him like somewhere. So that was, um, and that picture was actually done by a local artist. We have the James Brown Arena marquee. Now, there was some controversy with this marquee. The original James Brown Arena marquee was designed by Mr. Brown and a, um, and a local artist, and it had Mr. Brown's likeness, and, there had, and, he, and it had his hand holding like an old school mic, and it had GFOS, Godfather of Soul, with a little heart. It was kind of like saying that the Godfather of Soul loved music. Well, the arena, this whole area, this um, Augusta Entertainment Complex, was going through some changes, some imaging and branding changes, and they changed the James Brown Arena marquee, but they're gonna change it again, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but yeah, they kind of gave it more of like a, you know, more of a plain, kind of just plain, seamless, black and white uh, marquee sign, when the original marquee sign was like very musical, that was very, very um, reminiscent of Mr. Brown and the Times. Uh, we got the respect mural, the end of 2006, we lost Mr. Brown, December 25th, 2006, so the week or so later, the um, public funeral, where everyone who was anyone in the entertainment business came right to Little Old Augusta, Georgia. Michael Jackson, Jesse Jackson, MC Hammer, and anyone who was anyone came to Augusta to, um, to pay their respects to the Godfather Soul. It was open to the public, it was televised, uh, you couldn't even get through this whole street. Like they had, it was every, everyone was there and if you couldn't get inside, you were outside. I remember watching on TV and I was just in tears because you could not believe, you know, life without James Brown. Because yeah. not only was he from Augusta, like he was just so present, like in your mind, like to, for him not to be there, that was crazy. So, but it was a wonderful um, home going and it happened right here, James Brown's funeral happened at the James Brown Arena in 2006, so that's, that's crazy. We have the Respect Mural, which is kind of looks like a little fun thing that another local artist put together. And in the background, you see Mr. Brown's face. That's like a, that's like a early 60s Mr. Brown when he kind of went back to his home. Oh yeah. He hadn't 
it wasn't it was kind of long but not quite and got some augusta some augusta little little um facts and just the garden city things to kind of make us kind of make downtown and make augusta kind of quirky but i love this this mural i'm really you know you just never know how history will play out and i'm glad that you know because he had that whole like cross state chase and everything you could they could have turned their back on his history if they wanted to but yeah. it's so cool that they've let yeah. you know his history of the music live on the way it should because he didn't think the music that people aren't even doing these days so augusta's known as the garden city that's our population but you kind of just got some random things established in 1736 so we just got some stuff and this was um this was put up maybe sometime last. This is more of a, a newer mural. James Brown Academy of Music Pupils started in 2011. They're in their 10th, uh, 11th season. They uh, learn music in the style of James Brown. Deanna has professionals come in and teach them. They, they sing. They are um, self-contained musicians. They perform. And they're actually on the circuit. They, uh, they were in Macon last week, if I'm not mistaken. And, and you said that was his dream? Mm -hmm, to have a music school to, to educate kids about music. Mr. Brown, um, church, his home church, his mother trinity. They have since then built another sanctuary out in South Augusta, so state of the art church. But this is what Mr. Brown wants. He moved from Snelling, South Carolina to Augusta to live with his aunt Honey. Aunt Honey was around the corner. Her house was around the corner. He uh, went to the trinity. This is also where Mr. Brown learned how to play the piano. This is also where Mr. Brown had his father, Pop Brown's funeral, in 1992. So, Mr. Brown and Pop were, were close. Pop has a house in Augusta, the family still owns it. And this is Trinity. Now, look to your left real quick, Jordan. All the way to your left. Trinity sat there forever and a day. And about two and a half, not quite three years ago, they moved it across the street. They lifted it. Trinity is now uh, a historic landmark. Not quite sure what the city's gonna do with it, but they lifted it up and moved it. So that's, if you can look, you can look and see how they move in the bricks that are behind it, how they kind of move the, the sanctuary. Oh yeah, yeah, back there. Yeah. Get on up. When Mr. Brown moved from Snelling, South Carolina's dad takes him to live with Aunt Honey. This is the street Aunt Honey lived on. Aunt Honey's, Honey's house actually sat where this um, motorcycle club was. So in the movie, when because Aunt Honey, you know, she had. She had escorts and, mm -hmm. and she had liquor. So when Mr. Brown in the movie is, you know, tap dancing and entertaining the soldiers because we have a base in Augusta, Fort Gordon, they were coming to Aunt Honey to, you know, to get whatever. And Mr. Uh -huh. Brown, as a kid, was tap dancing and all of that took place right here. Wow. That is where that scene took place. Think about it because people, you know, Augusta's a very black and white, cut and dry town. So you didn't have cars. So you live right here with a church like one block over. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how that went. But yeah, this is Mr. Brown's neighborhood. This is his area. For years and years and years, the church was just like a staple in the hood. And when Mr. Brown was, in, was home, he might just be in church and sit down eating. Church is so chicken. So you at churches trying to get you something to eat, you might see Mr. Brown. Whatever car he was in, or a limo, it was out front, and you could see Mr. Brown, he might just be in there eating his own chicken. Okay, so we're actually going to see the home of the school that actually let Mr. Brown go, their biggest, their biggest graduate ever, would be graduate ever, um, Silas X. Floyd, operated as a K through eight school in Augusta. This is about the only school uh, little black children could attend in the 40s and 50s and 60s. All right, so Mr. Brown had to be let go from Floyd because of inadequate clothing. I am a school teacher. I've seen kids who did not have the best clothing. But when you have to be dismissed from school because your clothing is so bad, that's pretty doggone poor. But guess what? When Mr. Brown made it and he came back to Silas X. Floyd, you got now your whole claim to claim being Silas X. Floyd was what? James Brown was the Floyd. So you got my aunt and my dad and those who grew up later on who came in behind him and say, I went to Floyd. James Brown went to Floyd. And my aunt even tells the story. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't think of this. She said he would come back to the school and the kids would just flip out. Like in his heyday, he would come back to the school. She said he was in the lunchroom one day as a little girl. And he came and he was giving all the little girls kisses. 
in the lunchroom. Come back to Floyd and come back to the school and make appearances. Do they have a memorial or anything to him in the school? I don't think so. I have to ask. I don't think they have one. I have Mr. Brown's hood. Giant Park is like your, you know, your, your local rec center, right? This is also the home of the James Brown family turkey giveaway. Much like the toy giveaway, the Brown family registered needy families at Thanksgiving to get a full Thanksgiving turkey and, you know, and meal. Now, it started out at Zion's Park, so you had the James Brown, you got James Brown and the James Brown family on James Brown Boulevard at the rec center in his neighborhood, passing out turkeys to a whole lot of people down the street who had been registered to get these turkeys. Once again, it got to be so big, they had to move the turkey of the way to a bigger venue out in South Augusta, but it started here. What I love about that is that the Brown family was very philanthropic all around, but they made sure Augusta came first. So what? So if you want to see the Brown family being philanthropic, you got to come to my city. Not only that, you got to come to my hood, be good, and you got to see us doing our thing right here, where, you know, right where he walked and grew up. Now, would you see James actually handing out turkeys? Yeah. He would be here visiting yeah. people? That's so great. Yeah, and he bought his Cadillacs here at the Johnson family Cadillac company, Johnson Motors. No matter what he had, he always kept the Cadillac. So his Cadillac came from Johnson. The family, when they buy their Cadillac, they come from Johnson. It is a home, um, home owned, homegrown um, dealership right here in Augusta. So he always came back and bought his caddies from here. The original, uh, we, we saw the funeral home that was the building also of the, of the original club, The Third World. It's now, um, it, it's been leveled, but if you look through there, you see like a, 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 like a burgundy truck and a white truck and that mobile thing. That's where The Third World sat in the 70s. Oh, right over there. Yeah. So you might, like I said, you might come to the club, you want to get out and hang out one night, go to the club, and Dave Brown has real live artists performing live in the club. This is like prime location. So Mr. Brown, the Brown family owned this block for the longest. They, you know, they deal, sell it, whatever, but that's what they own. Now we are on walls away. So Jordan, I want you to take you all the walls away because it's going to change a little bit. Currently, um, it's a mixed income apartment building, but the bar there used to be a very upscale hotel in the uh, 30s and 40s and 50s where all of the diplomats and um, Presidents and celebrities, celebrities would come and visit Augusta and they would stay here. It is also the site uh, in the movie where Mr. Brown um, was, as a young boy, the stream of conscious scene in the movie where Mr. Brown is fighting another uh, little black boy and uh, the Augusta Country Club members are betting on who's going to win. Mr. Brown wanted to be a boxer and a baseball player also. So they were boxing and it took place in this area, I don't want to say it was right there, but it's close by. And the Augusta Country Club is actually right down this street. You won't see it, but this whole area was uh, kind of like Augusta Country Club, boxing, kind of like betting on little kids, that kind of thing, like back in the day. That scene so weird. in the movie happened right there in that block in that area. Super prime location. And a historically very preserved, very upper class uh, African American neighborhood. Ella Fitzgerald is their neighbor. Neighbor, uh, anyone you can think of who lives in Harlem. But Dee Dee says she wants to move back down south to raise the girls in a slower, you know, atmosphere. So, Mr. Brown, beautiful home in St. Albans, in um, not in, not in um, Harlem, in Queens. They decide to move back to Augusta. Mr. Brown. Finds a home in Augusta. The Godfather soul. Good for it, right? He wants to buy the home. And the banks would not give him a mortgage. So, it's the mid-70s. Deanna and Yam are small. They move from Queens. Mr. Brown buys Pop Brown. A nice, smaller home in a very nice neighborhood. Buys cash. He lives there with Deanna, Yama, and Dee. Mr. Brown saves up and buys the home on Walkway. Okay. We're gonna see the home on Walkway. We're gonna see what we can of the home on Walkway. Oh, so it's right there, right up those gates. Mm-hmm. You can still see the guard shack.
Oh yeah, there's that guard shack. James Brown's old property. 3056 Walton Way. This is the home of um, James Brown. You can kind of see the house back there. Yeah. <laughs> now watch this. When we first started the tour, you couldn't see anything. But trees and limbs have kind of gone down some. So now we can see a little bit. Deanna told me that they just kind of, it was just like a regular family. They come in on the side, like the garage, come the garage, carport door on the side. They were just school down here. Um, they had to have uh, guards and security to take them to school. But Dee Dee wanted them to live slower place um, in Augusta. So this is the house they lived in. Now, movie connection. The Christmas scene when Mr. Brown and, and um, Dee Dee played by Jill Scott, they've got the Santa Claus outfits on. That happened at this house. So the Brown home, in its heyday, owned by Mr. Brown, the whole property will be covered with Christmas lights at Christmas time. So you've got people who are backing up traffic on both sides of Walter Way to see the Christmas lights at the Brown home. That's awesome. The, uh, the current owners said they still find bulbs on the property from time to time. So you got a man who they didn't even want you in the neighborhood who's now blocking traffic both ways to see your house. I, I love it. Once again, Mr. Brown was just, just making, making strides in the city. Now, the Brown family, um, he didn't lose the home or anything like that. You know, you sold it, you buy another, then you buy your home home. And so you have the home home, which is still in immaculate condition um, over in Beach Island, South Carolina. Right over the border, right? Right. Right, right. So that's where his home home, the one that he had specifically designed for himself, that's still in perfect condition over there. But yeah, this is where Mr. Brown lived with his family in the 70s and I think early 80s. And smack dab in the middle of his office building. Who owns the office building up here in this prime location? James Brown. So this is uh, James Brown Enterprises. There was also another location that is not on the tour. But this building actually uh, burned up about 20 years ago. And um, I think after it burned up, burned down rather, he just moved to the other office building or to another location. But for the longest, this is the building he owned. And um, they said whatever, whatever car he was driving, like churches, he would just pull up on the side and just get out. No parking lot. I mean, no parking space or anything. He just pull up and get out. It's only right here. So, yeah. But this was James Brown. This is the um, James Brown. Enterprise. This is where the building everybody's familiar with. Not a whole lot of movement because you got to have some money to come up in here. So around um, the first part of April, when we have the Masters tournaments, when it's really it's really kind of busy with the the private flights and stuff. But this is where Mr. Brown will fly in to Augusta uh, on his private jet or his private plane. Of course, he will fly in. It will make something to fly into Daniel Field because. The house he moved into with Pop Brown and Dee Dee before about the house on Walter Way was across the street. We'll see that too. So this is um, Daniel Field. Don't quite, not, I'm not quite sure what happened to Mr. Brown's um, planes or whatever, but it's always good to know that this is where he was. It's crazy because it's, it's very low key. As you can tell, not a whole lot. We have a, um, a commercial airport out in South Augusta, Augusta Regional Airport, but this is a, the private one. So. Well, you said he took some photos out here with yeah. that plane, right? Yeah, it would be, they would kind of be like along the, the runway. Am I saying the right thing? Yeah. It would be kind of like standing like that. Some of those pictures were actually taken in Augusta at this very airport. So James Brown would have walked right through there to enter his plane. How cool is that? In 1945, we are going to see Pop Brown's home. The home is still owned by the family. So contrary to whatever um, is said on the movie, you know, when you had James as a child had some contention with his father, he and Pop Brown, Pop Brown were very, very close. Pop Brown stuff, he stuck with Pop Brown, bought him a home, and we're gonna see the home in Highland Park. And this neighborhood was primarily um, a white neighborhood. Even now, it's still a, a mixed income neighborhood. I mean, a mixed, mixed, diverse neighborhood. But yeah, but Pop Brown was able to, they were able to get Pop Brown into his house. It is still owned by the family. No one lives here, but the neighbors are so cool. 
they always keep up. You know, they look out for any suspicious activity. They'll probably text Deanna and say, hey, we just saw the bus come by. They're always so, uh, they're always very, very uh, cognizant of Pop Brown's home. Now what can happen is if somebody from the family comes to Augusta and needs somewhere to stay, they can stay in Pop Brown's home because it's still maintained and everything. And this is the one that you said that when he couldn't get the, the mortgage, they came and stayed there they first? Came, they bought this, he bought this house cash and lived here with this Pop Brown's home. That's yeah. so cool. So that's the whole thing. Wow. What a freaking amazing mural. Oh my gosh, that is a giant mural. I can't even fit it into my screen from over here. Holy cow. Wow. Look at that. Over 100 singles, 50 albums, 1963 top charts. Look at that. That is so great, man. Oh, yeah. The Godfather of Soul, James Brown. <laughs> They're talking about James Brown across the street. <laughs> Welcome to Augusta. Everybody wants to talk James Brown. Look at that. Oh, and then there's a profile over here. I was just saying, I'm like, everybody in town wants to talk James Brown. Augusta, that's what you'll see at any given time. Now let's look, let's talk about the, um, the solid parts of the mural. There are songs, song lyrics, and song titles. So you see Killing Is Out, School Is In. You see Make It Funky between the purple and the blue. You see, don't be a dropout in the purple. Oh, At the yeah, top right of the there. red is try me, come on down. You see in the red and orange, please, please, please. You've got the song titles embedded in the solid parts. I always find something different when I come down here. It's always something I've not, I've not seen yet. Look at that belt buckle. That's great. Okay, let's talk about the belt buckle. <laughs> this is the artist's spin on Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown's jumpsuits were custom made. He did not wear a belt with the jumpsuits. That was Elvis's thing. Yep. So the artist has kind of put a little um, belt, a JV belt on, but he never wore belts. And Elvis never did the splits like that, yeah, so. They had their own thing. He's got his birth and death dates and it's at the bottom around the base of the uh, microphone in blue at the bottom. Got Mr. Dynamite. I personally like the, um, his, the detail in his hair in this picture right here. You got the gospel quartet. He started out um, with um, with Bobby. He's the gospel quartet. Good job, Augusta. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. This is how they end the tour. What a great tour of Mr. Dynamite. All right, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed that tour. It was a blast for me. And if you're ever in Augusta, you should try and take it because there were parts that I didn't film as we drove along. They told a lot of great stories, pointed out a couple other places that I didn't put on camera and totally worth it. Now, I kind of lied at the beginning and said that we were gonna see the museum. We're gonna see it, just not in this vlog. So come back and we'll make another vlog of the James Brown Collection exhibit inside the museum. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye.